In this video, I will show you how to reinstall your tension assembly, and then I'm going to show you how to zero it out and explain exactly what that means. Let's go over the parts that you are going to need to reassemble your tension assembly. So let's start with this one. This is called the slack thread tension guide. This part is an adjustable part that goes on sort of behind the whole tension assembly itself. And you need this little screw also to hold it on. This is where the screw goes through. This is an adjustable part, which in this video, we won't be adjusting it. We'll be doing that later once we have needle and thread in the machine. Just so you know, the original screw that I took out of this machine was a hot mess, but I was able to get a replacement screw. And so that's the one I'll be using. So both of these, this is your tension stud and your tension pin. And this little pin is going to go down inside the stud when we put it all back together. So just make sure you have both. This part here is called the take up spring thread guard. It works with the take up spring and I'll show you how when we put it all together. Two tension disc. These should be nice and shiny and polished. This side needs to be very smooth. So make sure you cleaned off any old oil and dirt as well as any rust. Rust can be easily cleaned off with fine grit sandpaper. So start with like a thousand, gently rub the rust off and then follow up with like a 3000 or so grit. And you will be able to get them very smooth and fairly shiny. They need to be that way because when they're together, the threads traveling right through the center of them and anything rough is going to catch up your thread and mess up your tension. This part here with the plus and minus on it is just called the tension indicator. And so once it goes on, we'll know when we turn our tension knob that one way makes the tension stronger and the other way makes it weaker. And this part here, the tension indicator flange is the part that will tell us exactly what setting our tension is on. So we use that number and we know, okay, when I sew this fabric, I normally sew it on a three, but when I'm doing something else, I put it on a four, whatever your needs are. This funny little part here with this little finger is the tension indicator flange washer. And when you look at this, yours may have a bent finger. Like if you can see this little finger coming up while mine is kind of bent, or it may be straight. Either way, it's fine. If it's straight, it's not broken. They just weren't all bent, but more than likely you'll have this bent finger just like this. You have this little beehive spring, which is just called the tension spring. The other spring you have is called your take up spring. And you just want to make sure you've cleaned it up. Make sure that down inside here, the little finger that's going down inside the coil, make sure that it's still there. And finally, you should have one little set screw. That set screw is going to go in the nose of the machine. And once we position this pin properly or the stud properly, that set screw is going to go up against the stud right here and hold it in place. And you can kind of see on this stud that little indentation where that set screw has been resting for who knows how many years. Sometimes this will be hard to remove from the machine. And what I do is if I have one that I feel like it doesn't fit back in the hole, I will take some sandpaper, again, very fine sandpaper, and just kind of go around and polish this up. That way, if any of those little indentations sort of have messed with the fit of how this stud fits in the hole, I can kind of sand that down and get it to go easily back into the machine. So that's what you're gonna need. You're also going to need a spool of thread. 
and try to choose something that is just slightly heavy. So in this case, this is a machine quilting cotton. It's just a little bit heavier than a standard, you know, polyester thread that I might be using, but that's what I like to use when I zero out my tension. So next, we can start putting all this back on the machine. So first part you want to grab is the slack thread and tension guide, this part right here, along with the screw. And this is going to rest right here. And you'll notice there's just a little bit of a beveled edge here for it to fit onto perfectly. That screw is going to go right in this hole here and watch this. <laughs> so if you want, you can lay the machine on its back while you put this part on. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you have a screwdriver that holds the screw for you, that should work because then you can use one hand to hold the slack thread and tension guide on the machine and the other screw or the other hand to screw it in. So what I want you to look at here though is that oblong opening. Eventually we may make some adjustments one way or the other, but for now just kind of go ahead and just sort of center the screw in that opening and then tighten it down. And it's tightened down and this isn't going to spin around on me at all. So the next thing we want to take is the tension stud and pin. And your pin will have a flattened end. Do you see that? That flattened end, it's gonna, we're gonna slide this down inside the stud with the flattened end coming out towards the end that we're going to screw the thumb nut on. So just slide it down in the hole and you'll see it can't come out the bottom because of that flattened end, so it's not going to fall out. Now this stud is going to go inside the hole here. And I just want to make sure you can see that hole right there. That's where we're going to put it. So one thing I'm going to do before I put that in the hole is I'm going to oil up the end of that stud just a little bit. And then I'm going to slide it in the hole until it goes all the way back. When you slide it in, you want this part here that kind of looks like a star pressed against the back of this hole here all the way back in, just like that. Now, we want to go ahead and install the set screw in the side here to secure this, but it, it, we don't just stick it in. What you need to do is, do you see this opening here in the stud? It needs to be turned horizontal. Don't have it crooked or vertical, horizontal to the floor. That's how this needs to be. So you're gonna have to eyeball it a little bit, but you wanna look at it, and when you look at it dead on, it's horizontal. So once you have it positioned properly, grab your set screw, and this is another one you might wanna put a little bit of oil on it. And I'm gonna spin the machine around now so we can put the set screw in. So here's the hole that the set screw is going to go into. Get it started, and then we're gonna double check and make sure that our tension stud hasn't spun around on us. So I'm just kind of getting that started. Then I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to look and make sure that it is in fact straight. That looks a little bit crooked to me. There, that is straight. So I'm just gonna kind of hold that in place while I tighten down the set screw all the way. <laughs> this is a long way to go. Okay, so I tightened it down and when I made that last turn, I just wanna make sure I didn't spin this at all. And no, it's still straight. That's exactly what I want. So tighten this down, and if you want, just go ahead and 
double check it, make sure you've got it all the way down. Now we're working back with the front of the machine and we're going to start to reassemble the tension. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to take the take up spring thread guide and do you see how it has this long finger? We don't want it pointing at us. Let it point at something else. So turn it away, pointing away from you. And then you're going to take both of your tension discs and you're going to put them so the beveled sides are together. Don't stack them like dishes, not like that. But one is turned one way, one is turned the other way, just like that. And go ahead and just put them right behind this part, the finger pointing away from you, the disc on the back side, and line up the holes in the middle. Then take your spring and we're going to take, and just like we put the tension disc on the back side of this part, we're going to put this longer part of the spring on the back and this loop in the front. So now all those parts are in a sandwich in the spring and just hold it like that. Then you're going to slide all of those parts onto the stud with the stud going through the coiled part of the spring and you're going to take that finger and there's a tiny little hole here. Well, it's not too tiny. Right there is a hole. As you slide the spring on and the tension disc and then the little loop here on the end of the spring, you're going to get that finger in that hole. Now watch where the spring is hanging. As it slides on, it's going to, if you remember that long little wire inside the spring that was running down the inside, that's going to find a little groove on this tension stud. And then it's going to stay in that position because it's in a groove. So make sure that your spring is pointing down towards the ground as you slide this all on and you slide the finger into the hole and you should be able to push it all the way back. And do you see this? My spring is pointing towards the ground. And if I keep this all back with my fingers, I can't move it. It won't spin around. It's stuck pointing down to the ground. That's what we want. Now we can take our tension indicator and put it on the stud. And the way that it goes is not like this with the pretty side out. It goes with the pretty side the ugly side looking at you. So the plus will be on your right and the minus will be on your left. And this portion right here is going to slide right into this part of the stud, just like that. And it'll just kind of flop around there. Next, you want to take your little beehive spring. I do like to oil this part up a little bit. It can get rusty, so the oil is going to protect it. And now, I put this on thinking of like a coffee cup. So this is my cup of coffee right now. I have coffee in my cup and if I turn it over, I pour out all the coffee. Well, I wanna keep the coffee in my cup because I like coffee. And I'm going to slide that right up against the tension indicator. Now we can take our little tension indicator flange washer, the one with the finger, and it's also going to slide onto this stud right here. But if the finger has a curve like this one, now you want the finger to point at you. If it's not curved, then you just slide it on with it pointing up towards the ceiling. But if it's curved, it goes on up towards the ceiling and pointing at you. Just like that. Now we can take our next to last part, which is the tension indicator flange. That's the part with the numbers. And you'll see there's nothing here in the center, so it's just going to slide onto the stud. And when I do that, I just kind of put the two towards the ceiling and slide it on, and then just let it go. So 
we're down to the thumb nut. And if you look, the, here's a pretty chrome side, the side without all the pretty chrome and just the nub, that's going towards the back of the machine. In our tension indicator flange, we have all these tiny little holes. So these actually fit together. That little nub can go in any one of these holes. And that little nub is vital in setting our tension just the way we want it. Put this back on, the two towards the ceiling, and then I'm gonna take, don't forget to oil these a little bit. It will just help you so much. But I'm gonna take with my chrome side out, and I'm going to start just a little bit. So I'm, I'm holding this back. There's a lot of spring to it. So I'm pushing it back, and I'm giving myself a little room to get this started, just so I have it on. Right now, I'm not trying to screw it on all the way. I just want it screwed on enough that when I get this to turn to zero, it doesn't fall off. It needs to grab on at least some of those threads. So now it's on. Oh, look, I spun it too far. It's gonna come off all the way. Maybe I needed to screw it on just a little bit further. There we go. So you should have it on. You can turn it clockwise all the way up to nine or counterclockwise to zero and it stops, but it doesn't come off. Now we can zero out the tension. Okay, so zeroing out the tension, what does that even mean? Well, before we do it, let me tell you what we're doing. So our tension knob, now that we have everything back on, should stop at zero. That little washer with the finger is doing its job and it's stopping it at zero. We are going to make sure that when at zero, there is not any tension on our thread. It should be at zero. If we start at zero and we turn our knob, then we should have whatever the tension is at one, two, and three, and it should be reliable to us. But zero is where we start and we have to make sure that at zero, our tension is actually zero. So what I want you to do before we go any further is see our little spring hanging down here? Let's go ahead and pull it gently with your finger and you're gonna pull it up over this finger right here, just like that. Now you should have some spring in your spring and it should stop on this finger. Now we can actually get some thread onto the machine. And I'm just taking my spool of thread here and I'm putting it up on the thread posts on top, which is why we put the top cover back on in the last video. And we're just going to run it to this little hook that you see right here. And let's look at something else real quick before I get ahead of myself. Here in the nose, you see we have our presser foot, and this is the tension pin releasing lever. At this point, when I raise my presser foot, this rocks forward and it bumps against that little pin inside the stud. See that move, it pushed it away. What that did, it's very loose here, which is taking the tension off the thread so we can pull our project away. And once we have this zeroed out, when our foot is down, this won't be loose like this. It will have tension on it to control the tension of the thread as we're sewing. So you should hopefully see this moving a little bit when you raise and lower the presser foot now if the stud is working and nothing is stuck in there. But I just wanted to show you how that works. Now let's spin this back around. So we have our thread on top. We have went through this little hook here and this slack thread and tension guide, this shiny chrome part here should line up perfectly with your tension disc and you can just run it along. And when you run it along that, it will go right between both discs. Then what you're going to want to do, and it helps to kind of Hold the thread here so you don't keep pulling it off the spool. You're going to pull it up. Watch my spring. Up, up, up. 
you hear that click? And then I let go. And now the thread has caught onto this little finger right here on the take up spring thread guard. That's what we do every time we thread our machine. When we're going to sew, we're going to pull it through and then up, up, up until it catches here and it will snap back. But that's where we want it to be. This is where I leave it whenever I set the tension or I zero out the tension. So now we're going to be working with this thread and this thumb nut. So what I can see is with my foot down, if I turn this, look, I have it set on a three. Look, do you see this spring? It's barely moving. Well, when I zero out my tension, I want that barely moving just on zero. When I start turning it to one and two and three, I should see this spring start pulling. The thread's got tension and it's moving the spring. I can probably get that movement if I crank it up to seven. See that? So what I want to do is I want to get this thumb nut screwed on as far as I can onto the stud while at zero I have little to no movement on this spring, okay? You can keep tightening it down by pushing back the tension indicator flange, pushing it back and then spinning that thumb nut and letting one, that little post come to rest in one of the little holes. Okay, so we're starting at zero. I feel like this is on the stud enough that it's not going to fall off when I turn it to zero. So I'm gonna just start by pulling that thread. And now see, I have a little bit of movement in my spring. Well, a little bit of movement is okay but not too much. So there's one way to check this that is pretty solid as far as you, you know what you're getting exactly. Singer says that when you have this turned to zero and you pull the thread, they actually measure the weight of the tension by grams and it says 23 to 25 grams of tension on that spring. So you can find one of these little doohickeys at the Singer Featherweight shop, and it will help you measure the tension on your thread. And the way that you do it is you're going to clip this thread here like this with your little alligator clip, and then you're gonna hold it. Do you see how this is hanging? Do you see my little numbers here where it says 0, 5, 10, 20? What I'm going to do is I'm going to start while my foot is down and my tension is at 0, I'm just going to start pulling thread through and I'm going to lift up towards the ceiling. So this might go out of view for you. But as I do that, I want to see if this pointer lands between 20 and 25, like right about in the middle. and I'm pulling it, and it's actually more like 10 or 15 is where it's coming in. So I don't have enough tension at zero yet. I need to add more. So I'm going to push back that numbered flange, and I'm going to spin my thumb nut just until that little prong on the back pops into the next hole. I'm gonna turn it clockwise. I'm adding more tension, clipping my thread, and pulling up. Ah, now we're at like 20 consistently, 20 grams. So what happens if I push this back and take that just one more hole over? You hear it click into place? And let's try again. There we go. 
it's going to bounce around a little bit, but it's bouncing between like 21 and 25. That's good enough for me. What you need to pay attention to is watch the spring, because if you don't have one of these, when I have this at zero, see how my spring just kind of jumps a little bit? just a little bit. That's good. If that's the only way that you can check the tension at zero, I would say it's best to have this little bit of movement like that. See that moving right there? Then to have no movement. If it's not moving at all, problems. And this is probably going to fall off and shock you as well. So best to just have it set at a little bit of movement like that. And remember, once everything's together, those little holes on the back are gonna work with the little thumb nut here to help you set it properly. So that is how you zero out the tension. And you can see at zero, we still have a little bit of tension when the foot is down. That is good, you want that, just a little bit. Now we'll fine tune this later when we go to do our first test so we'll check the setting here of the slack thread and tension guide we'll make sure we don't need to loosen this screw which when we loosen the screw and and this thing can spin just a little bit clockwise or counterclockwise changes the location of this little finger that our spring is resting on and that's important and we'll talk about that in another video but good for you you have your tension back on if you have any questions about this adjustment just leave them in the comments below sometimes we can do everything right and the spring this spring here is bad it needs to be replaced so if you're doing everything right and it's not working out we might need to talk about whether or not you need to replace this spring so the next video big deal we're going to put the wiring back into the machine it should be a really fun video. And once we do that, we are not far at all from sewing with our featherweights. Thanks again. I'll see you again really soon. Bye.